In this video, I'll be explaining to you three top career options when it comes to finance careers and experiencing incredible career growth over the next few years. The finance industry is not necessarily making the best use of its employees' skills. If you're young, you have a unique skill set and you have a creative mindset, you can make massive impact immediately and earn a high salary in a niche part of finance. From crypto to challenger banks to emerging markets, the industry is rapidly growing in many directions. It's up to you to capitalize by choosing one of these three options and applying your creativity to thriving in this industry in these particular finance niches and I'll be explaining to you exactly how in this particular video. I've been working in investment banking for over 10 years. I've worked at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley and HSBC and I've learned the keys to be ahead of the industry trends. It's all about benefiting from first mover advantage. Now, first mover advantage means that you have a competitive advantage over your other co-workers when it comes to this industry. So what this means is you're making the first move, you have the advantage of making the first move by heading to these various finance niches before they're popular, before they're trendy, before they become oversaturated in terms of their particular type of finance and other people trying to work there and flooding the job market there. So let's go through some of the key growth areas in finance and how you can benefit from working there. So the first key area I'd mention would be crypto, right? Now, crypto, I'm sure you've heard about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, various other NFTs, things like that. Now, typically, cryptocurrency, you see a price volatility, right? Times when the price is high, there's a bunch of investment flowing into the industry, and the times where the price is low and then there's job cuts and people losing their jobs. So what you want to do is make sure if you're going to work in crypto, you find a job that's relatively stable in an established kind of finance firm, maybe Coinbase, which is a popular exchange, Binance, another popular exchange, something that's more established. So you have a bit more stability in terms of your job. And regardless of the price volatility, crypto is here to stay. Sometimes the price goes down, the price goes up of Bitcoin, but long term, the industry is still attracting significant levels of investment and you want to secure yourself a solid position in the industry, regardless of where the price moves up and down. Now, big exchanges such as Coinbase and Binance are hiring for a number of roles such as financial experts, finance analysts, trading analysts, risk management experts and things like that. And also things you might not initially think about, which would be sales and marketing online, having good digital marketing skills. So those things are also important to consider when it comes to innovative areas of finance. They're not just looking for financial experts, but also sales, marketing, risk management experts and so on. Now, other areas I wanted to mention here in terms of crypto, apart from the big exchanges like Coinbase and Binance, would be DeFi, right? Now, DeFi, effectively, DeFi stands for decentralized finance, and this means when you would essentially be lending your cryptocurrency to others and getting an interest payment on that. No difference from a savings account or a mortgage where you'd be lending money, for, well, borrowing money from a bank at a particular interest rate. Now, this is how DeFi works. It's a growing area within crypto. Uh, many people who have significant, significant holdings within crypto, they want to lend that out and earn an interest on the cryptocurrency they do have. And when it comes to DeFi, you can become a financial analyst. You can specialize in coding jobs. You can build the infrastructure of a particular DeFi company. And there's companies I'd recommend here, which would be Reef or Double AV, AVE, however that's pronounced, Avalanche, I think is another one. So these type of companies are quite good because they're a very innovative part of finance. And when you see further crypto financial innovation and financial markets develop, it typically heavily involves something like DeFi rather than simply just a cryptocurrency exchange where you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies. DeFi is looking at how can you use crypto in a similar way to the established financial industry. So it's a good area to consider working in. And then I'm sure you've heard about NFTs, which would be buying and selling art on various NFT platforms, such as Rarible and OpenSea. So are the two companies to, to look into, maybe go on their career website and see if there are any jobs available there. Uh, they still have growth areas and it's not just art they'll be buying and selling. NFTs are effectively a non-fungible token and that token can be applied to physical world asset. Non-fungible tokens can be used to... Um, 
purchase or signify the ownership of property, other legal documents, things like that. So NFTs are just kicking off in terms of the industry. I'm sure you've seen price volatility there too. Just because the price of NFT art is a bit volatile at times doesn't mean that the NFT technology itself won't work in the longer term. So just bear that in mind when you are considering working in financial innovation areas. Don't be so concerned with the volatility in price, but think about the long-term career growth prospects because you're not here to make an investment. You're really here to work in a particular career type. And many big names, such as big brands, you've heard of NHL, the NBA, WWE, they're all using NFTs to increase their revenue and sell products. And if NFTs were just a gimmick for a small part of the internet, it wouldn't be used by these big name brands. They wouldn't want to risk their reputation on such a ridiculous part of crypto. They do believe in the product. They do believe in NFTs. Otherwise, they wouldn't be selling them. Now, the next thing I want to mention is challenger banks. So you might think, what is a challenger bank? Challenger bank are traditional banks that aim to disrupt the industry by offering innovative services and better customer experiences. You might have heard another term called neo banks, digital banks, where there are other banks that essentially offer digital only services without any physical branches. So many of you in America, I'm sure you use WISE, transfer WISE for transferring money between currencies for quite a low, low cost. And when it comes to Monzo, that's quite big in the UK and a certain extent to the US. Um, this is an app only bank, so you can just use it through your app. They save money by not having a bunch of physical bank bank offices and bank branches. Similar with Tide, Tide is another option if you want an app only bank and um, this is good for business banking that's what they offer i personally have a tide account for my business so i would recommend them and uh, revolut is another one you've heard of good for money transfer they also offer remote work if you want to work there so um, I've had job interviews at Revolut. I've used Tide for my business, as I say. So you can see those type of companies. They're good because they're looking at innovation. They're more open minded to crypto, different types of um, lending when it comes to lending money to their clients. Different type of innovation, which is very interesting to work on gives you an opportunity to become an expert in that type of financial niche. So to really think carefully about getting involved in growing areas of finance, because many people, they'll just go, oh, I want to work in investment banking. I want to work in TradFi, traditional finance. And they're not considering how there are good job opportunities there. There are high paying opportunities there. But also to a certain extent, those bigger banks, because they can depend on, let's just say, quantitative easing, their established business models, a level of dominance in the market, they don't really have to think so much about innovation. So they can be late to the market. They can rely on hiring a consultancy firm to do the research and figure out how something works. But you don't want to be late to a particular part of an industry where you could be established in your career, say a challenger bank or crypto, as I mentioned before, and they become the subject matter expertise expert. And then people are dependent on you. They want to pay you a high salary because you're seen as an industry expert. That's where you want to position yourself. So don't necessarily think about the name of the company, but how you are positioning yourself as an individual, as an industry professional. Next, I want to talk to you about emerging markets. Now, what do we mean by emerging markets? Emerging markets are growing area of finance in terms of growing countries. So you've probably heard of BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Now, these particular countries and many other countries that are joining BRICS um, is essentially an organization similar to you've probably heard of the United Nations, Security Council, NATO, things like this. This is a specific group of growing economies, emerging markets, that are looking to develop more of a independence from the Western powers. And without getting into politics, they've discussed things like setting up their own currency, um, trading in different currencies like the Chinese currency instead of American dollars, uh, developing perhaps a gold-backed currency, their own type of cryptocurrency, just to be more independent of the West and some of the political decisions the West is making without going too much in that direction. And many other countries are joining. Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia joining in, in 2024, Eastern European countries. And what they're looking for is developing their economy, developing their financial industry, looking at innovation, not only in terms of finance, but agriculture and other areas. So you should consider, maybe you do have that background because now we live in the West, it's quite diverse. 
particularly in major cities. Maybe you are Croatian, Croatian for example. If you can speak uh, Croatian, if you can speak um, some of the African languages, maybe you come from that background. This is a massive, massive, massive opportunity for you. You combine your finance expertise on one hand, then you combine your language skills and your cultural understanding of that part of the world, Africa, for example. And you can be you can work for a major company and say, OK, cool, I'm going to focus on emerging market sales. I'm going to help our country, our company. Maybe it's Morgan Stanley, for example. I'm going to help us develop our business in Africa. I know the culture. I understand finance. I understand Western culture and African culture and African languages. So you can be the intermediary there and get paid a very high salary for being that expert, that quite rare individual, rare industry professional from having that unique skill set. And I'd recommend that's something you do consider doing. But the last kind of point I want to uh, discuss with you, um, I went through cryptocurrency, challenger banks, and I went through emerging markets, is how you can apply your uniqueness, your creativity. Now, I mentioned your unique language skills you might have, but also think about you know, how you can apply any unique interest you have, right? May you, you can combine your interest in cryptocurrency and your background from Nigeria, for example, and maybe, maybe you grew up in the West. So let's give a hypothetical example. You're from a Nigerian background, you understand Nigerian culture, Nigerian language, and you grew up in the West. You have an interest in crypto, and you studied economics at a major um, university in the UK and you're working for a major bank like Morgan Stanley. So you've got crypto, Nigeria, Western culture, English language, Nigerian culture and language, and you also got working at a major bank. So that's a unique individual there, right? And you can uh, um, update your LinkedIn profile to make it relevant to that kind of unique balance of four things. And also you can apply your creativity on thinking how you can combine all of those things to make you unique in the marketplace and pick jobs and maybe make internal moves at the company you're currently working at to best maximize that type of skill skill set that you have. So it's all about thinking creatively in this industry because you don't want to be just another person who's working in a quite generic broad area of finance. You work in mortgages in the finance department of Halifax. You work in trading bonds. You're a bond trader. That's too broad. It's not unique enough. You're not going to be able to survive in the long term of the financial industry, which is becoming more competitive and looking for unique sets of skills. So in this video, you've learned about the three key areas of career growth options within the finance industry, cryptocurrency, challenger banks and emerging markets. You've learned how to apply your creativity, your unique skill set to succeed in any of those areas. I have a free ebook in the description, um, which I'll be grateful if you do want to read. It'll be helpful career tips for you, help you grow your career within the finance industry. And I have two relevant um, videos on your screen right now to help you with LinkedIn, help you with asset management careers, and I hope you enjoy them and I'll see you in the next video.